Hey everybody, we're having a makeover here on the Jesus Trip. You've seen our new intro. The Jesus Trip is being made over. Our studio here is in the process of being made over in the next couple months. And I am being made over. My daughter Nova, her name means new. She is giving me a makeover. I've been also working out. I've been growing new muscles. There's a lot of new stuff happening, and we are being renewed every day from glory to glory. Not that we're doing anything to become new. We were born anew 2,000 years ago when Jesus stepped out of the grave. But we're only scratching the surface of the future glory and manifestation of our inheritance and true likeness in this new world. And so there's a lifetime of discovery for us. Renewal is a lifestyle. Christian growth is all about the daily wonder and discovery of Christ in us, the true self, a realization of the true self as the one new man. And to be honest, I've been bored. Not bored with the gospel, but don't you get bored with all our religious packaging, totally disillusioned by the same old stuff. It is amazing the continued detox that, that I myself continue to receive in my own life from all these obligatory evangelical compulsions driven to keep banging our heads against the wall. Now, you are well aware that I myself, I get bored senseless with charismatic formulas. I am bored spitless of the same old, same old revival culture. Call it an outpouring. Call it a healing explosion, a prophetic conference, whatever, the next big thing. All these words we use to describe rows of heads in the same big rooms with the same dudes on the same microphones reiterating the same old non-gospel baloney. Guys in skinny jeans with guitars, singing with passionate faces, begging God to do what he's already done. Now, for all the talk about kingdom and miracles and the glory of God and God doing a new thing, there is still this lifeless, monotone, dull consistency to it all. And the question I have is, what about wonder? Where did amazement go? I think the Lord wants to arrest us again with wonder and with awe, like children where we walk slow, we see colors again, we notice the world around us. And when I talk about wonder, I, I don't mean that naive susceptibility where we're just itching to hear some other speaker who promises to shoot golden rainbows out his rump or drop gemstones out his sleeve. Not the guy who claims to have raised 500 people from the dead and not a single one of them was ever verified. I don't mean naivety. We do maintain a healthy objectivity. There is a healthy type of criticism, but on the other hand, we don't fall headlong into the other ditch of all-out criticism. We don't lose our awe and our joyful expectancy. We, we learn to see miracles all around us. I think that we are called to be wonder junkies. We're we're not called to disillusionment and burnout and religious doldrums. No eye has seen, no, nor ear has heard all that God has prepared for us in Christ, but the Spirit is constantly revealing it to us. I think that there is something to the transcendence, to the otherness of God that should utterly mesmerize us on a daily basis. You know, Bobby Connor, he often used to say that we are way too familiar with a God we barely know. I think this bland familiarity, even with our concepts of grace, can blind us to the sheer magnitude of Mr. Grace, his living presence woven into every atom, every leaf, every fiber of our humanity. God has made himself known and familiar to us. That's the beauty of the gospel. He has stepped into our Adamic flesh and walked among us. He has fully revealed himself. And, and he has walked into us. And so this is the double-sided coin of mystery, that he is both transcendent 
and he is familiar. He is one with us. He's closer than the air we breathe, and yet he is still utterly beyond. And there is an unimaginable scope to this circus of divine oddities that we will forever be entertained by throughout the ages. We've been woven seamlessly together with an incomprehensible creator of the universe who is always drawing our hearts and thoughts and imagination and experience to a higher plane. The gospel is an utterly simple message, but such a profound one that we should never get bored with the real deal. Tangible man, transcendent God, rolled together in the one person, Jesus Christ. There's no room for boredom in that. Boredom is not a fruit of the Spirit. If you're bored with your current concept of God, you may need a religious enema. God has made himself so known and familiar by stepping into our humanity in the incarnation. And yet, the incarnation has melded us together with majesty and such an ethereal, celestial otherness that we will forever be exploring his depths. It is not merely that God was bound up in Jesus in the incarnation, but that in Jesus, God bound the entire created order to himself, that God was in Christ reconciling the cosmos to himself. Now, there is no place where he is not. Everywhere I go, the earth is blazing with the glory of God. He is truly all in all. He fills all things, as Paul tells the Ephesians. That's incarnational lifestyle. And there is a great awakening that we have been effortlessly woven into union with him. But let me tell you, for all the criticism of what some have called hyper grace, whatever that means, let me tell you that this thing is going to a whole nother level of hyperactivity. You ain't seen nothing, baby. We are just sniffing the cork of what Christ has done. The church is about to wake up to how much we have underestimated Jesus in his saving work. The grace of God is giving us a new lens. It's putting a whole new spin on everything. And grace is not a box that we put God into. Grace is the lens by which we now see everything else. I mean, watch out for these guys who decide they'll package grace and make a ministry out of it. Or some of them even want to start a new grace denomination as if they own the market on God. Yes, we need good theology, but you have a lot of guys out there, they start to get a little bit of revy on the message, and they suddenly become amateur Facebook theologians, and every single little post has to be some flowery articulation on the profundities of grace. Now, there is time to learn, and of course, there's a, a time uh, and a joy on sharing what is learned, but dude, just chill out and enjoy. We need more Jesus unplugged. All these social media sites with people yakking about grace theology sometimes makes me as sick as the old charismatic crap I came out of. Now, do I like grace theology? Of course. We got a whole grace-based seminary plan for next summer, for God's sake. But it's drunk. It's alive. It's not just doctrinal dribble because somebody needs to fill space on a Facebook post and, and they don't have a real life and so they're trying to be articulate. Look, go out and live life. Jesus is real. Grace is not a doctrine. He's a person. I just can't do the Facebook post thing every day. There was a while where it was amusing, but there there is a time to unplug and, and honestly, I've lost my interest. I haven't responded to direct messages on there in months. I'm swallowed up by life. Turn off the information and be still and know that he is God. Live out of the center. Don't live out of CNN and Fox News. It's what the mystics of the church called contemplation, practicing the presence of God, saturating in the reality of God, and not just digging through all the clutter of external voices. What you are really looking for is that internal voice that says, this is my beloved. And out of that place, you aren't scrambling to scratch that itch for attention or approval or the latest trend or for likes and retweets that are only going to leave you bored and burn out. Now, I'm not just going on a Facebook rant here. I'm not ranting against Facebook. I'm just saying there's a higher plane that we live out of. And it's not just repeating 
pithy little quotes on God's grace. That, that's not the real thing face of this thing. The makeover is going to look like enjoying the poor, going on hikes with your kids, taking your sweet time in the vegetable aisle, and trancing out on the color of the artichokes, discovering music, jogging in the rain, drinking wine with your wife, seeing the face of Jesus, and the unexpected joys of life. There are packages that we sometimes have to let go of from one season to the next toolboxes that don't work anymore in the current season because life is full of change. And I know you don't like upgrading to iOS 7 because nobody likes change at the time. But if you don't change and, and learn to live in the unexpected swirl of real life, you are going to die. I don't know where this thing is going, but I know it's going to look different. God wants to make over our mindsets, our motivation, our approach, everything. And even here on the Jesus trip, it's the same. I, I don't know what ministry will look like in the coming days, and I really don't care. He's got it all figured out, and that's the important thing. At times, I try my best to get the Jesus trip out to you guys once a week because there's so much that I do want to articulate about the gospel. But at other times, I'll go weeks without putting one out. I, I don't feel this religious compulsion just to fill airspace. I just want to be. And one of the dangers of pastoral ministry, as I see it, is that, that same pressure to generate something new or different every week just because you have to. And so it's easy to see the gospel or grace as just a trend, just a season, and then back to the hamster wheel. And the conference circuit is the same way. It's a meat grinder. These speakers always having this pressure to have the latest cutting-edge revelation. And what that produces... Rather than a people who just enjoy God and enjoy life and the simplicity of the gospel, you produce people who are always trying to scratch that elusive itch, get the next spiritual key that's supposed to make them complete. And sometimes just pulling back and shutting up is the bravest thing you can do. Shut up and enjoy the wonder. Get lost in the simple pleasure of life in God. And it keeps you young new, makes you look better. Don't worry, I'm still going to do videos for you. That's not what I'm saying. And you can still quote pithy theological axioms on your Facebook post. That's totally fine, okay? I'm not knocking any of this stuff. But don't get so wrapped up in the packages and articulation of the menu that you fail to eat the feast that has already been set before you. And whether you've been striving towards spirituality or you've become hardened and disillusioned by that strife, there is a place of awakening again to wonder and awe. And it's right here at hand. One of my favorite verses of late has been 1 Thessalonians 4.11, where Paul says to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands just as we told you. Now, that is a great verse, not just for people caught up in a social media generation who have to, you know, articulate a point on everything, but it's also a great verse for those who've been burnt out in the hyper missionalism of the church today. For all of our focus on outreach, and miracles, and doing the stuff or whatever, Paul says, make it your ambition just to shut up, relax, and live life. There is so much glory on plain old ordinary life. So much wonder and ecstasy on the day-to-day -day incarnational life of the believer. You have been plugged into God. That is good news. It is a new day. It's going to look different every day. We're coming into a greater and greater revelation of what's been ours all along. There's going to be a new way of seeing. Renewal has been here all along. Let us have eyes to see him. Lord, I thank you for awakening those eyes of our heart. I thank you for that spirit of wisdom and revelation that we would know the depths and the heights and the, the extensive riches of who you are and what you have done in us. I thank you that our lives have been grafted into God, that we've been plugged into the divine. I thank you 
Father, for a, a people who are your body, a mystical body, a supernatural people. And I thank you, Father, for changing our mindsets and expanding our horizons. I thank you, Father, every day that renewal of mind, that renewal, that awakening from the inside out of who you are and what you accomplish in Jesus' name. We love you guys. We'll be back with you here maybe next week, hopefully really, really soon. God bless. We are coming to a region near you, so find us online, join us for the fun and the unusual. As always, we appreciate you spreading the word in your city. The Holy Ghost Slosh Fest is returning to the UK November 1st through 3rd. So join us in London for Slosh Fest Europe. Visit sloshfest.com for more information. And for the first time ever, Slosh Fest is coming to Australia and New Zealand this December. So join myself, John Crowder, and Dave Vaughn on this five-city tour. More information, again, at sloshfest.com. Our three-day mystical school is always evolving with fresh gospel goodies. So if you're new or haven't caught one in a while, check out these upcoming locations. We'll be in Toronto, Canada, January 3rd through 5th. Our first Minnesota school is coming to St. Cloud, January 24th through 26th. Our Alabama school is sold out, but we'll be back in the South to Nashville, Tennessee, February 7th through 9th. And we're on the west coast of Canada in the Abbotsford, Vancouver region, February 21st through 23rd. I'm back in South Africa for a Grace Immersion Tour in Johannesburg and Cape Town, February 26th through March 3rd. And our only California school for the next year is in Chico, Northern California, March 14th through 16th. I'll also be in Denver, Colorado, March 28th through 30th. And don't forget our three-month extended Cana New Wine Seminary. That's next summer. Applications are already rolling in, so we recommend you visit cana.co. You can find these events and several more at thenewmystics.com slash schools. And this is your last chance to catch our pre-order discount on my new book, Cosmos Reborn, and my wife Lily's new book, Grace for the Contemplative Parent. They both ship out in October, so visit thenewmystics.com slash books. Thanks a bunch.